You have spent countless hours on online courses, coding tutorials, and YouTube videos trying to learn programming. And yet, you feel stuck. You're lost in this endless sea of advice and learning resources that just don't work for you. But the worst part is that everyone else seems to find this so easy. Like this guy, who got job offers at Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. You're starting to feel like maybe you're just not cut out for programming. You're on the verge of giving up. So you've come to this YouTube video, hoping that I would have all of the answers, hoping that I would help you finally figure it all out, teach you how to get your dream job, and actually start making money. And you're in luck, because that's exactly what I'm about to do. I have broken this video down into different sections, and you can find a breakdown over here. First, I will be giving you a three-step framework to learn coding. This is the framework that I used back in 2020 that took me from knowing nothing about coding and almost failing my first coding exam to now learning to code and landing my dream job in data, working with over five different companies on freelance coding gigs, and becoming financially free in my 20s. Let's get into it. Of course, the first thing you have to do is pick a programming language. My first language was Python, and this is what I would recommend to beginners because it is simple. So you get to focus on core concepts and problem solving instead of getting overwhelmed by complicated syntax. Once you've picked a language, you need to select an online course. Don't spend too much time on this step because all online courses will teach you the same concepts. So just pick a course with a decent rating and you should be fine. If you don't know where to find online courses, Udemy, Coursera, and even Skillshare offer many coding courses at an affordable price. Free CodeCamp literally has five hour long online courses on programming languages like Python, C++, and JavaScript that you don't even have to pay for. I personally took this programming course on Udemy when I was just starting out, and I really liked the instructor's teaching style but any online course should work. Okay, so now you've taken an online course and you have all of this newfound knowledge of programming concepts. You feel great. Here's where you need to be really careful. Many people, myself included, fall into a dangerous trap while learning to code. It is called the tutorial trap. It goes like this. You want to learn to code. Someone out there promises to make you a programmer as long as you take their online course. So you take the course. You spend a couple of months on it, and you're finally done. Now you're excited. You have all of this newfound knowledge of programming concepts. But then, you don't know what to do next. What's the next step? You realize that although you've learned all of these new concepts, you still don't know how to code an application or build anything useful. And then another person comes along. I'll teach you how to code, and for real this time, they say. You buy their course too. Before you know it, it's been an entire year. You're out $5,000, have taken 10 online courses and five coding boot camps. And guess what? You still don't know how to code. Eventually, you start to lose morale. Maybe this just isn't for me. You decide, it's just too hard. And then you give up. If this sounds familiar, then you're in the tutorial trap. It is the process of taking an endless number of online courses and never actually seeing results. Here's how to break out of it. Once you've taken one online course, whether that is in Python, JavaScript, or any programming language you're interested in, move on. As I mentioned earlier, all beginner level programming courses are a regurgitation of the exact same concepts. So there really isn't any point to doing more than one. After you've taken one online course, you need to put the skills that you've learned into practice. You need to apply the skills that you've learned. And here's where I'm gonna give you some advice that might sound strange. Don't do projects just yet. Many people do this thing where they take one online course, get really excited to apply everything that they've learned, and they pick this huge overarching project as their end goal. Then they get stuck halfway, get overwhelmed, and they give up because they were trying to do too much, too fast. I have been there and done that. The thing is, what most people don't realize is that programming is a skill best developed through gradual, incremental challenges. What this means is that you first need to introduce your brain to smaller, simpler problems and then gradually increase the level of difficulty. So how do you do this? Using a platform called HackerRank. 
It is completely free. It has a bunch of programming practice questions that start out really simple, like print hello world or add two numbers. The problems increase in difficulty as you solve them. So as you progress with each question, your problem solving skills start to improve and it doesn't feel as overwhelming. It doesn't feel as difficult. I used HackerRank for about two months when I was a beginner. I spent every single day on the platform. And by the end of those two months, my programming skills had dramatically improved. I learned to think like a programmer, to problem solve. I realized that there was always more than one solution to a problem. And I got faster and better at finding these solutions. These are skills that cannot be gained through an online course or another person, no matter how hard they try. These skills need to be developed through experience. And the best way to gain this kind of experience is through platforms like HackerRank. LeetCode is a similar platform that you can look into. I also recommend going to ChatGPT and asking it to give you programming practice questions that are tailored to your background. And of course, the final step to learning a code is to actually build out something of your own. Now that your problem solving skills have improved and you finally learned to think like a programmer, you're ready to go out there and create an entire project without getting overwhelmed. And there's already a ton of advice about the types of projects that you can create. If you're just starting out, you might want to begin with a simple to-do list or calculator app before progressing to something more difficult. My first few projects were an analysis of the gender gap in Hollywood, web scraping my favorite genre of books on Amazon to create a reading list, and using data to analyze whether black drivers were more likely to get pulled over by the cops. To keep myself motivated, I found a way to integrate programming with topics that I was actually passionate about. In my description, I will leave a more detailed guide about programming projects and how you can get started with them. And that is the entire roadmap. Honestly, it's just three steps. If you do it right, the first step should take about one month of full-time study. The second step should take about two to three months. And the third step should take another two months. By the sixth month, you should be prepared to get a full-time job or an internship. If that's the case, then why is programming considered so difficult? Why do hundreds of thousands of people enroll into online courses and coding boot camps only to give up halfway and pursue an entirely different career path? You see, it's not because programming is a skill that requires some kind of special intelligence. It's just because most people don't have the right mindset for it. Don't believe me? I'm going to prove it to you. The first mindset shift that you need to make is stop comparing yourself to everybody else. I first started learning to code in 2018. I was pursuing a computer science degree in university and I did abysmally on my first coding exam. I was this close to failing it. I was sitting in a class full of students who had years of programming experience. I was one of the only people who had never coded before and it showed in my grades. I mean, of course, I was trying. I was pulling all-nighters trying to understand what on earth inheritance was and how that was different from composition. But it simply wasn't enough. And with every new piece of homework, assignment, and test, I felt my confidence waver. At that time, my programming professor looked at me and said, maybe you should try something else. Some people just aren't cut out for coding. And at that point, any tiny bit of self-confidence that I still had left vanished. I immediately started comparing myself to all of these other students in my class who were getting better grades than me. Some of them already had internships in hand. These seemed to know exactly what they were doing. And I looked at them and I assumed that coding just wasn't for me. What I had failed to realize was that all of these kids have spent hours and hours practicing building web applications, participating in hackathons. They have had years of experience. Comparing myself to them was absurd because although I was trying really hard, I simply didn't have that kind of experience. You know, I had just started like a month ago. It is easy to look at another person's success and feel bad about yourself. Oh, this person got an internship and already has a full-time offer. Oh, that guy won a hackathon last week and I'm struggling with the most basic tasks. But you didn't see all of those hours that they've put in. All of the times that they have tried and failed to get to where they are today. Comparison truly is the thief of joy. 
It wasn't until I spoke to some of these people that I realized they weren't exceptionally smart. They didn't have this ultra high IQ or secret formula that I lacked. They had just tried and failed over the course of many, many years. And I had to do the same. The second trait of a good programmer is they embrace failure. Do you have any idea how it felt walking into that programming class every single day knowing that the professor expected me to fail? The person teaching that class thought that I wasn't cut out for it. It was gut-wrenching. I considered dropping out so many times. I should have picked a different field. I'm a creative person, not a technical one. What am I even doing here? I'm wasting my time as well as everyone else's. If I had listened to any of those voices, I wouldn't be here today. And it isn't just me. I have a friend, Alicia, who felt the same way. We took the same course, took all of the same classes, and this professor had discouraged her so much that she ended up pursuing an entirely different field. Today, she's an accountant. She gave up on her goal of becoming a programmer because she let one person's opinions get the best of her. Don't be an Alicia. Three, it's okay to be different. I think that most of us have a misconception when it comes to fields like programming. We think that the field is reserved for certain kinds of people. The ones with quick, logical minds. The straight A students. The naturals. And that cannot be further from the truth. While it might be easier for some people with mathematical aptitude and logical minds to learn programming, Literally anyone of average intelligence can train themselves to code. I used to look at myself and these other students in my class and think, I'm not like them. My mind just doesn't work in the same way. I'm not a technical person. I'm a creative. I'm passionate about social issues. I like public speaking. Most people in tech, or at least the ones in my class, were methodical and logical. I was convinced that programming and problem solving came naturally to them. They even excelled at math. I was painfully aware of how different I was compared to all of these other students in my class. But you know what? It was a good thing that I was nothing like them. It didn't mean that I wasn't a problem solver. It just meant that I approached problems differently. And because I approached problems differently, because I was more creative, I saw opportunities that nobody else saw. When the rest of my peers were struggling to get jobs during the pandemic, I was writing about my experiences online. I found a way to integrate data and programming with topics that I was passionate about. And that got me so many remote work and freelance opportunities at a time of mass layoffs. While the rest of my class had one job that they went to every single day, I had five different income streams. I wrote and published a book. I launched an online course. Four, going the extra mile. Back in 2021, this company reached out to me for a long-term freelance coding project. They were interviewing multiple other candidates at that time, and I was one of them. At one point, the hiring manager told me that they were hesitant to hire me because of potential availability issues. You see, I was 12 hours ahead of their time zone, and I also had a full-time job. They let me down slowly, telling me that they weren't sure if I could swing the time difference and they might be better off hiring a person in the same time zone instead. Many people at that point would have taken this as a rejection and moved on, but not me. I realized that I wanted this opportunity too much to let it go just yet. So I completed the interview project regardless and wrote an article about it and published it on my website. Then I sent the employer a link to it. In just a few hours, they got back to me. By the end of that week, I was hired. I went on to work with that company for the next two years. Honestly, I was pretty scared to send that email because it could have gone horribly wrong. They could have told me off for not taking no for an answer or they could have just completely ignored me. But you know, so what? It was one weekend worth of extra work for two years worth of side income. It was worth the risk. Five. Change your circle. You may have heard of the saying, you're the average of the five people that you spend time with, which means that if you're constantly surrounded by people who have your dream job, people who work in tech or other programmers, then you're so much more likely to get to where they are. And it isn't just about building a network that will get you future opportunities. You see, the human brain is like a sponge. 
The things that you talk about on a daily basis and the information that you consume will quite literally shape your reality. Psychologically, you're likely to model the behaviors of people around you. So being around other successful programmers will lead you to adopt similar mindsets that will help you succeed. Also, most of us need other people to keep us motivated and hold us accountable. So if you're just sat there in your room day after day, taking online courses and doing projects, it's going to get really dull really fast. And I know how this feels because I was in this situation during the pandemic. I was stuck at home doing this really difficult thing and I didn't have a network. I didn't know other programmers who I could speak to or work with. And this is where YouTube videos, books and podcasts become really useful. They become your mentors. They become your network. I used to watch YouTube videos of other programmers, people like Daniel Burke and Tiffin Tech, and these people became my mentors. Sometimes I would play this hour long video of another person coding in the background just so I could code along with them. It can be so powerful to see and draw inspiration from other people who have gone through a similar journey. Learning to do something difficult on your own can be an isolating experience. You need to get creative. After all, we're just humans and we inevitably look to each other for comfort and inspiration. That's all for this video. I hope that you found it helpful. I am aware that this isn't your typical how to be a programmer roadmap. The thing is, I figured that there were so many learning resources and roadmaps out there that lay out these steps for you in more detail. But there simply isn't enough information addressing mindset changes. There isn't enough support to help you through the difficult days. The advice that I give in my videos is the advice that I wish I had when I was younger because I wasted so much time doubting myself, looking to everyone else in the room for reassurance, comparing myself to other people, instead of simply trusting the process and putting in the hours. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and do better. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye.